So let's take a look at what's new in Service Pack 1 for DPM 2007 for protecting virtualized environments. Here I'm in my DPM 2007 SP1 Administrator's Console and I can see I'm already protecting some SQL and Exchange servers. We're going to go ahead and create a new protection group for protecting just my virtualized environments. And I'll go ahead and open this up just so we can see a little bit bigger. Now I've got several different machines that are going on here, but the ones I'm most interested in are my Hyper-V machine on Windows Server 2008 and my Virtual Server 2005 R2 machine running on Windows Server 2003. Because this podcast is an update, we'll first look at what we were already doing for this environment, specifically for Microsoft Virtual Server 2005 R2 with Service Pack 1. Here we can see that just like any other workload protected by DPM, I can of course protect the shares that are on that machine. I can protect the volumes that are on that machine, C drive, D drive, etc. I can protect the system state of that machine. And then because this machine is running Virtual Server 2005, I see an application workload available to be protected as well. When I open up the virtualization workload, I'll see each guest operating system defined as an individual object. From here, I can go ahead and protect the entire configuration of the virtual server itself, as well as I can choose any guest operating system I'd like to protect. That includes Linux machines, Windows NT4, 2000, or anything else which is supported as a guest within virtual server. In this case, I might go ahead and protect just a given machine like a file server. Now notice here that all these machines are defined as a single object. I can't drill in to anything lower than the overall virtual machine. On the right hand side I can see that underneath my configuration option notice that my FS2 machine which is being backed up is being defined as an online backup. As we discussed earlier as long as I'm running a VSS capable guest operating system and it has the proper in this case VM additions or in Hyper-V's case integration components then even though I'm only backing up from the outside from the host based perspective I can do an online backup which is not going to require downtime not going to require an agent inside the guest, but can actually back up the mis machine in an online state. It's doing this by using those referential VSS queries and then securing the VSS rights on the inside as well. Now that's virtual server, but of course the topic of the day is Hyper-V. So let's take a look at what's different in Hyper-V for protecting these same kinds of platforms. Here we see my Hyper-V server has been expanded. And I've got a couple different options available. Again, like any other workload, I can see the shares in the box, the volumes in the box, in this case, the system state of the box. I've got my Hyper-V here, but I also want to draw your attention to the fact that this machine also happens to be running SQL Server. Again, because Data Protection Manager does not require different kinds of agents for different workloads, the Enterprise Data Protection Management License, or eDPML, will provide application protection of any SQL databases, exchange storage groups, SharePoint farms, or virtualization host platforms that are happen to be running on the boxes I've selected. In this case, the reason my Hyper-V server is running SQL is because it's also running Microsoft Virtual Machine Manager 2008. For this demonstration, I'm not actually going to protect this environment, although I certainly could. I'm more interested in looking at what does Hyper-V present for me as far as protecting my virtualized guests. When I open this up, you'll see an expansion. If I draw this over to the right, you've got the same basic idea as before, where I can see each of the various machines I'd like to be able to back up. However, unlike in the virtual servers case, where I simply picked the guest operating system I wanted to protect, and then over on the right-hand side, it would tell me whether or not this was going to be an online or offline backup, the VSS, or Volume Shadow Copy Services Writer, provided by Hyper-V actually gives us that information within our tree-based view. In this case, the display where it shows me that these clear machine, such as my Exchange server, can be backed up using the child partition snapshot. This is basically the equivalent of an online backup, meaning that my Exchange server or my SharePoint server or my SQL Server 2008 machines, all of these are enabled such that I can back them up without downtime simply by choosing one of them. However, for some of the other machines, I've intentionally done something different with either the integration components or something else precluding their ability to be backed up in that same way. 
In this case, it displays for these machines the ability to protect using saved state, which is effectively what in the virtual server case called an offline backup, meaning it's going to go ahead and actually save the state of that machine, snap it, and then bring it back online again. Because of some of my other demonstrations, I'm using System Center Operations Manager to be able to demonstrate the new management pack, which is also available for DPM 2007 SP1. Let's go ahead and select that machine as well. So while I'm seeing a lot of different kinds of data over on my far right side, notice that the experience is basically the same. I can protect either online or offline based on the workload, simply by protecting the guest operating systems themselves. Again, notice here that one of the options I picked was to protect Exchange. If I really wanted to protect Exchange as Exchange, I might just go ahead and open up my Exchange server. In this case, I would actually see the Exchange storage groups, and in fact, if I open these up, I'll see I'm already protecting the exchange.